Hello, everybody. I am Sue Bhattacharji, Pre-Construction Manager at DPR Construction, and I'm really excited to talk to you today. I'll be talking about a topic that's really close to our hearts. It's the pandemic and how it impacts us in the pre-construction realm. Before I get too much into the weeds of that, let me tell you a little more about myself. Born and raised in India, I came here to do my master's in Texas A&M. Once I was done with that, I came over to the Bay Area here in the U.S. because of my love for the ocean. It was great. I loved it here. And I worked with two general contractors. This is my second one with DPR, and I've been here for a while. During the initial years within the construction industry, I did meet my now husband, Srikant, and we enjoyed hiking. And I even had him do a half marathon, and then we did the Big Sur mud run. It was a bunch of stuff, right? And then we got married, and we have two kids, and their names are Simba and Nemo. I named them that because of my love for Lion King. Yeah, crazy. And they are a handful. And the reason I'm saying that is because I had to make time for it, right? And during my stay with the other contractor, I realized, you know, work isn't all you have. You got to live life. And that really changed my mindset towards having a balanced life uh, where you work and you play, you work hard and you play harder, right? As life progressed, work got more busy. And this photo that you see here is from January 2020. It was Nemo's second birthday. And around the same time, I had a work trip scheduled. And so I asked my dad, I called him, he, he lives in India. And I called him and I was like, hey, dad, can you come help me out for a couple of days? And lo and behold, he did come. Um, he came and he helped Srikant out with the children. and. I went and did some of my best work that I could have ever done, thanks to my dad's help. I think it's important for us to realize that the pandemic has kind of thrown that support system out of whack right now. Life has become really uncertain at these times, and we should understand that, right? We should all be understanding of everybody else, because I think the way I feel, I feel you do too. And the more we get that, the easier it's going to be for us to make a lot of decisions in the future. What is it that you miss the most during the pandemic? Is it that glass of wine with your girlfriends? I'm sure we miss it all, especially with our friends, our coworkers. My favorite part would be Friday happy hours at work. So we definitely miss that social connection. And the third thing is just working from home in general. Having to work from home presents unusual challenges that we have never faced before in our lives. And just coping that with that is something that we all have to do, not alone, but together as a community, as a society, and give each other that, you know, chance, the chance to succeed and to say it's OK. You know, if that kid pops up during one of your phone calls, that's OK. It's not the end of the world. Right. One of the main key items for coping is just having more patience. Patience with your kids, patient with your husband, patient with your coworkers. Patience at work is key to succeeding. Before you get upset about why somebody did not do something, find out what might be bothering them. There might be a lot of other things going on in their lives, especially during these times of the pandemic, that we are all unaware of. Give them that chance to talk about it. The second thing here is adaptability. In these times of uncertainty, it is important for us to be adaptable. We need to adjust and make sure that we are planning our days more rigorously than we did ever before. You know, you can no longer stop a coworker and say, hey, can we just chat real quick? It's not that way anymore. Uh, it's tough because you might try calling them on the phone and most of the times it might go to voicemail, um, but you got to schedule the calendar like the calendar is the key to success in this pandemic, especially for planning your days. And that's where the adaptability counts. Sometimes you might find a coworker who'll be like, oh, I don't know how the Outlook calendar scheduling works. Go help them. Talk, to, talk them through it. Share screen and work it with them. Right? These are really simple nuances, but they go a long way in helping us out and helping us plan our day. And if we plan our day, People around us will have a better time. Our coworkers will never be rushed and it'll all be smooth, right? That's the ideal picture we want to be in. The last thing here that I wanted to mention was just continued innovation. We cannot stop innovating. You know, previously in the construction industry, 
the expenditure on innovation was not much. But now, having that continued innovation, testing, trying out new software, trying out new ways to manage your people, your projects, it's, it's, it's of utmost uh, importance for you to make sure that we are checking the new technologies out. The new technologies are morphed so that they can work with us in this world of pre-construction. And trust me, we are a lot better prepared for this pandemic than many others are just because of how technologically advanced we've been getting over the past few years. The one thing that I want to tell everybody here is be ready to test it, train with it. And remember I said patience before? Use that patience right here. You have to be patient with new technology sometimes. Pre-construction itself is planning the project. We need to think a little more about how to plan projects given the COVID impacts on job sites. How does a project function if a person is identified with COVID? How does an existing project in a hospital or one of the other critical facilities function if somebody gets COVID in one of those job sites? And you know, you are working in an existing facility that's supposed to be running. It's about the what if scenarios and planning that work. No matter where you are, whether it's in the US, in the UK, in Australia, you have to plan for what happens during the pandemic. And it might be throwing in some money in there in your budgets or putting more time in there for your schedules, but this needs to be discussed at all levels of every project. The second thing is just the market and labor conditions. There's a lot of fluctuations. Sometimes you might hear about scarcity of some materials, or sometimes there's just a delay, right? You need to do the research adequately before you jump into the plan for your project. The market conditions also change weekly sometimes, or daily for that matter. So having those con conversations is key no matter where you're doing pre-construction from. The last item here that I would like to touch base on is just being able to scale up and down during the times of pandemic will help you survive this. You know, the market is gonna recover eventually, but you need to plan for that. You need to persevere and not give up. And no matter where you are, it's gonna come back and you have to stay strong for that. I would like you to go back with these three key takeaways. The first one being innovate. Innovate yourself and encourage those around you to innovate. It is important that we, as people who have been in the industry for a while, encourage others around us to do the same. On different kinds of projects, you know, you could innovate using modeling, prefabrication, 3D cameras even, and it is important for us to continue doing that. The second item here is planning your day. Planning your day is essential to pretty much conquering the pandemic. It is important for us to understand that taking time for ourselves will make us more productive and better contributors to our family and to our work. The last thing here is perseverance. Do not give up. We all have to know that things will get better, things will turn, and the economy will come right back up. So on that note, I would like to say thank you to everybody for listening.